Hey everybody, Chris from CK Cycles here. So the air box is done. Uh, and so I moved on to the triple tree. Essentially the triple tree uh, on this bike needs to be completely refurbished. Uh, here is the top plate. And as you can see, paint is uh, chipping off of that aluminum. Hardware is rusted up pretty good. Uh, headlight bucket is rusted pretty good in there. Um, you know, the, the ears, um, those have got some pretty good rust on them and things like that. So I figured uh, while I had everything apart, although I didn't see any active leaks on the forks, um, I figured, you know, I might as well just do uh, a new set of fork seals. It's a fairly quick job. Um, and uh, I, I was able to order uh, some new fork seals. I went with all balls fork seals for this bike. And so it's time to uh, do those. So I already took the cap off of this fork and took out the main spring and I also removed the retainer clip and the washer that holds the main the seal in. And so now I need to get the inner tube out of the outer tube. And that is going to require, oh, let's see here, an eight millimeter Allen wrench. And then I made this little tool that I think that they probably make a specialty tool that reaches down in and grab some of the inner tube uh, pieces to hold them steady while you take the retaining bolt out. I'm sure they make a special tool for that, but I have a whole drawer full of old uh, sockets. And this is a half inch socket that I cut. So there's just a couple of ears. And when I get this out, I'll show you what that's engaging. So hopefully this won't be too difficult. See if we can get it on there. I think it's on there. Come on. Okay, there it goes. I think I got it. Sometimes I feel like these can be real, real sticklers. I think I hopefully got it. No, nope, not all yet. There it is. That's completely loose. Cool. We got it. Okay. Hopefully this comes back out easy. Okay. There's a inner, it's like a piston or something, I think. There's a small wrist pin right here. That needs to be removed, and then the piston, I think it's called the piston, I should probably look it up online. Figure out what the technical term is. That should be able to come out, and I don't want this thing to fly away. There it is. Alrighty. And so what that nut is engaging it's just a flat-sided uh, surface to get that out. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll get the fork cleaned up here. It's got a little bit of surface rust on it. Luckily, there's no rust down on the surface that goes in and out of the uh, uh, outer tube, you know, so there shouldn't be any problems with the new seal. Uh, it's just got a little bit of surface rust here where it uh, bolts onto the, or it's clamped in the triple tree. 
So I'm going to get that cleaned up. And then I'm going to see about getting the seal out. Okay. Right Inner tube cleaned up. Um, now it's time to get the seal out. And sometimes for me, this can be the most difficult thing to do. Those seals get pretty hard and rotted in there. Sorry, I don't have better lighting. Uh, that's kind of far away. But anyways, I made myself oh, a little slide hammer, I guess you could say. Um, and it's got a washer here on the end. Now what I do is I kind of hook uh, one edge of this washer on the underside of that seal and start slide hammering the seal out. And then I, I move the hammer to another part of the seal and, and start hammering it out. Um, and it just kind of takes time and, and persistence uh, to get this seal out. Who knows, they might make a oh, a fancy uh, seal removal, removal tool. Uh, but this is kind of what I do. And we'll see if it works. The biggest thing is I think you just don't want to damage... Um, any of the internal or kind of edge surfaces um, of this outer tube. You know, you want those to remain uh, undamaged. See now, I don't know if you can see it. What I did is I nipped away at the rubber to get to the metal ring of the seal and nipped away at that. And then I just put heat on that metal itself, get it to expand or something a little bit and break free. And No discoloration of the of the uh, fork itself. So I don't think I damaged that by doing that, and that might not be the right way to do it. I I don't know. But there you go. Now that seal is out. I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to hang this one on the wall. That was a pain in the ass. And then I'll install the new seal. Good. So make sure the mating surface of the fork is uh, nice and clean. Put a little oil, help with the seating of the seal maybe. I have a feeling this will go in a lot easier than the other one uh, came out. Nice light taps. And I found that the uh, male part of an inch and a half piece of PVC works just about perfect for seating these fork seals. It's, it's about seated. spot all right 
fork seal seated. I'm sorry for the lighting. Uh, we just got through that really nasty uh, ice storm here in the north. And uh, we're living off generator right now. So I don't have the best lighting. Oh, so retaining washer goes in after the seal. And retaining clip goes in after the washer. All right, I think that's good. So I'm gonna take another quick break and then come back and we'll put the inner tube in. Okay, we're ready to put it together. Um, okay, so this goes in here like this. Comes out the other end like that. Retaining clip goes right here. Don't want to lose this sucker. Oh, that would be a bad day. I have to wait a week and a half or something like that to show up in the mail. There we are. Clip on. Now this thing, I don't know, is this a piston or plunger? I don't know. I should probably hop online and memorize what all the, 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 the names of these parts are at some point, huh? Try and sound professional. Put it on like that. Now, a little bit of oil on the inner lip of my seal. Lube is good. Lube is good. Oh, that feels good. Good, good, good. Yes, okay. Now, little retaining bolt. See if we can get it started. Feels like it's started. At some point, the inner mechanism will spin. Do it down on my lap, just easier to hold it that way. Tool comes out better that time. Alrighty. Work is together. Now the spring, and I believe there's a tapered end and a straight end. I think that tapered end goes in first. Like that. Actually. And then that, there's a small little cap that goes on top of the spring. And that piece. But I got to put fork oil in that first. Let me get that going. Okay, so I think as far as fork oil, I would say, check the manual. I think, um, depending on if you're XT is a C model or a D model, there's different amounts, or if it's a TT, I, I think that there's, you know, different amounts of oil that go in based on the model or type of bike. 
Uh, and so I'm putting in, I think, about 225 milliliters of fork oil. I believe that that is what is prescribed. I did remember to put my drain screw back in the bottom of my fork. I originally took that out to drain the fork oil because, man, I've, I've taken forks apart, haven't drained the oil correctly, and the oil just gets everywhere. It's just a mess. <laughs> it's just a mess. Okay, now I don't want to lose my spacer or anything, but I am just going to work it just a little bit. Ooh, yeah, just to see if I can get some of that fork oil all around and inside. Okay, now the cap. These caps aren't too hard to put on, so that's good. And where is my socket? I'm really, I'm gonna have to wait to torque these down. Um, until I get them mounted on the bike and in the triple tree. And then I'll torque those caps according to the manual. Feels good. Okay. Two forks rebuilt. Now I just have to move on to the actual triple tree parts. And then the front end of this bike's coming together. All right. Well